So I'm going to jump into tokens. And we skipped around a little bit, but we're going to talk about tokens on Solana, right? So everybody wants to know about tokens. Everybody wants to know about, um, you know, NFTs and stuff like that. So, and just so you know, the command is Solana program deploy. Um, so let's talk about tokens. So on Solana, tokens follow a standard similar to Ethereum, right? Like Ethereum's got the ERC standard. Tokens follow a similar standard on Solana. Um, it's a different standard. It follows the SPL standard, which I think has a more technical name, but I forget. And basically, the way this thing works is you have an account that represents your token. And I'll explain how the transfers and all this other stuff works as we go. But basically, every token gets created as an account because, like we said earlier, everything is an account, even a token. So when you create a new token, you create a new account, and then you actually set the inner data of that account to these fields right here. And this is the standard for mint data, right? So is initialized, that's, has the data been initialized as a mint? Is this account a mint? The total supply, the decimal places for the supply, and then the two different types of authorities. So quick note on decimal places. You can see I put the calculation in here Basically, what that means is it's how your supply breaks down. So you can see it's quantity times 10 to the negative one times decimals. So in layman's terms, if you have three decimals and you want to, let's say, mint five tokens, that's actually going to be 0 0.005, right? It's just like you're taking the decimal, whatever number decimal place is over. That's all that means. With an NFT, it's zero because if you think about it, one is one, right? Like one NFT is one. So this is the standard right here. These are the defaults. The typical SPL default is nine and the typical NFT default is zero. You can decide to use whatever decimal place you want for your own token. But if you want it to be an NFT recognized by like most wallets and explorers, you need to use zero. Um, so anyway, what file are we deploying in target? Um, if you have questions, throw them in the questions tab. It's easier for me to track, but this is the, when you build with cargo build BPF, you will get target deploy program. So I don't know why that came up as a link, but that's what you'll get. Um, anywho, so going back to tokens, so yeah, and then the authorities down there, pretty straightforward, right? So Mint Authority is the one who can mint new tokens, who can introduce new tokens into the supply. And Freeze Authority is the one who can actually freeze the movement of these tokens. And what that basically means is like, they can't be transferred, they can't be you know created more of, you can't do any of this stuff, it's frozen in place. So pretty cool stuff. Um, when it comes to NFTs, you can disable the mint authority. So you mint one and then disable the mint authority. And that's how you get a non-fungible token. There's no other token in supply. And when you disable minting, that's irreversible. So it's by design. So you can have NFTs. So basically an NFT is you create a token, you mint one of them, and then you disable minting forever. And you have a non-fungible token. One supply is one. That's it. And we'll see that in the code. So on Solana, you know, this is where things get a little bit different than maybe some other chains. You have what's called associated token accounts. So we saw the default fields in like a typical Solana account, like, so, like your wallet, for example. And one of them was Lamports. And that's because Lamports or Sol is the native token. But think about it. If anybody can create an SPL token or an NFT, how would we possibly add, you know, like the balance for every single token that lives on Solana? How would we add all that to like a default account? Like you really can't, right? Because like there's, there could be unlimited numbers of them. So what you want to instead do is you want to instead have a separate account called an associated token account. And that token account is basically going to point to the mint that it's for and the wallet that it's associated with and it's gonna track the balance. That's literally all it's designed to do. So it's just like an intermediate account that says like, 
here's the wallet I'm for, here's the mint I'm representing, and here's the balance of that mint in this wallet. And that's exactly why it's a separate account is because when you create a new token, you can create a new associated token account and so on and so forth. So that's how those things work.